obviously a great way to start our conference in play. Um, I was happy with the start that we got in the game. You know, I thought we were uh, very active defensively in the beginning of the game. And I thought we shared the ball very well on offense to get high percentage shots. So um, from that standpoint, I thought it was, um, you know, a success. And, um, you know, the biggest thing we talked about at halftime was not letting down, continuing to play. And I thought we did um, about as well as a, a job as we're capable of doing right now to kind of keep our focus and, and finish the game out the right way. You had 19 turnovers, but I thought your team handled their man. That's really well. Got good shots. I think a lot of turnovers just flopped. Yeah, it was. Um, I, I agree with you, Ducky. Yeah, that 1-3-1 zone they play obviously has great size and length to it, um, and it's something that you don't see all the time. So sometimes your passing angles or your areas that you're going to be open on the floor are a little bit different. Um, but I really, a lot of our turnovers came on on sloppy fast break situations and um, kind of some, some miscues, some miscommunications. And so um, we obviously have to clean that up. It was something we talked about you know, after the game. Because um, when we made simple plays, we got really good shots. And I think when we tried to complicate it a little bit or do a little bit extra is when we got ourselves in trouble. And I think if we can limit those things while continuing to you know, have the assists or have the simple plays, um, then I think we can be a whole lot more effective offensively. You are playing a pressing team like that. I guess, I guess just how much easier do you do things to get away if you are playing the way that you know, they defensive idea and they have to be really, really, really putting their, uh, their, uh, their baskets and thus their chances to, uh, to, uh, to actually get that press. Yeah, I mean, it's, so, a way for, uh, it's a way for us to control tempo. You know, I think if we can get stops, it can help us control tempo and keep the game in our favor. It's hard when you when they get out to a lead and they can start to press. And now you really can't control the tempo of the game. And so we were able to do that by getting stops and then being able to work for a good shot. Um, you know, in, in past games where we haven't had as much success against the Mountains when they've jumped out and now you have to play from behind. And that's hard when they're maybe better at playing faster than you are. 18 turnovers, you're pretty good with that. I mean, not 18 turnovers, 18 18, yeah, very, very pleased with that. I think um, you know the, the more that we can continue to share the ball and move the ball, and I think obviously it started with Kmon. I thought he did a really good job of um, being aggressive but under control. You know, that's something that we talked about. You know, having him get into the teeth of the defense, but not selling out to shot or selling out to one decision. Being able to get in there and then make the right decision once he got in there uh, is important. And so, uh, you know, he kind of started that going. I, I felt lucky and. You know, uh, Rodney and Marquise and Aaron Tate obviously I thought passed the ball really well when we got the ball, you know, into the post and then the defense collapsed. He was able to kick out for some really good shots and opportunities. Uh, so yeah, 18 assists is a number I'm very happy with. And you don't see a score like this too often in the other teams in the league, you see a score really being you know, kind of like that. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I think. Um, I think it's too soon for all of that. I think people are still trying to sort things out. And so I, I think people might, you know, look and see and say that, you know, we shot the ball well and they didn't shoot the ball well and it was a home game for us and, um, you know, kind of go from there and maybe not read too much into it. You know, maybe in you know, a couple of weeks, if you see some scores like this, you might start to read a little bit more into it. But I think it's really too soon to, um, you know, make decisions off, you know, one 40 minute sample size. And you were mentioning that some of the guys that like came on Like I said, I think um, you know Kayvon's a big part of that. I think when he's under control and he's communicating to people and he's helping find shots for people, I think that just makes everybody else at ease. You know, if you're a guy who, you know, if you're a guy like Rodney who, you know, is a good shooter, and there have been certain games where people try and take him away, and now Kayvon can find you, you know, a couple wide open shots. Well, now you take a deep breath. You know, if you're lucky and you can get a couple good clean looks early in the game, or you know, a couple driving opportunities early. You take a deep breath, and so I think everybody was able to kind of be at ease because, you know, Kayvon was able to find some people some shots or create advantages for others to now drive and make some plays. Um, and I think that it starts there and it kind of trickles down, you know, from there. What's your 
what's your read on the St. Francis PDA? So. Um, you know, obviously they've had you know probably the best non-conference. Um, them and Sacred Heart of any of the teams in our league. Um, you know, a, a, a big time win at Rutgers, uh, where they you know went on a stretch where they got to Gordon 42 11 at one point. And uh, you know, they're a focused, focused team, and they're going to be ready for us to go in there on Monday night and play. And it should be a fun, exciting atmosphere, I believe. And you know, I hope our guys are excited for the challenge because I, uh, you know, I'm pretty positive that St. Francis will be. How about to their early season this year's carry over from last year? I think it's you know, I think it's part of it. Obviously, they have you know a lot of their roster back, uh, a lot of experience and confidence. I think was built. You know, during their Northeast Conference run last year. Uh, we know how hard the three games that we played against them were, uh, and we don't expect it to be any different on Monday. You know, uh, when you have, you know, senior leadership and you have experience like they do, you know, they're a team that's got better each and every year, and uh, they're looking to make that next jump, and, you know, so far it seems that they're poised to do that. Uh, uh, both uh, Jafar and uh, Ryan uh, uh, are still on the team, or are still with the program? Um, Jafar is, is um, going to sit down and, and look at some options, possibly to transfer. Uh, and Ryan is um, looking at, you know, deciding if he wants to continue. I, I think, um, you know, one of the things that's hard about college basketball, especially for someone like Ryan who has played a lot of minutes his whole career, uh, <coughs> you now you come here and you have, you're asked to put in a lot of work and you don't always get as much return from you know, being in the games, and so I think he's trying to evaluate if, you know, what, what makes sense for him. Um, you know, it's an unfortunate, you know, and it's unfortunate, uh, you know, both those guys, I think, uh, we loved having being part of the program and the team and saw bright futures for them both, but, you know, they, they make decisions on what they believe is best for them. Any questions, guys?